Welcome back, folks. Take a look at crude. Crude right now pulling back about $2.40. Quite a run we've had, though. You back it up just to August, folks. We were trading at 60, 61. What is the low there? 61.74 up to 85 bucks. Backing off a bit. We're going to talk a little crude. We're going to talk a little Forex. Let's jump over to our man, Teddy Kegstat. We talk to Teddy every Wednesday at 40 past the hour. You can reach Teddy every trading day, folks, at his website, forex-trading-unlock.com. Teddy Kegstat, good morning. Good morning, Tommy. So we got uh, a lot on the agenda today, Teddy. Of course, we just got the private payrolls this morning. Pretty decent number. Uh, we all know it's Fed Day. Uh, expectations pretty solid in terms of what's going to be happening with a little tapering going on in terms of the assets. Uh, rates staying the same as the expectation. We find out at 2 o'clock, press conference at 2.30, and we got a little bit of a pullback in crude this morning. Uh, what are you looking at first in this market, Teddy, in terms of whether you're talking Forex, commodities, and, and Fed Day? Uh, well, today it's Fed Day, so always right now, it's pretty much a sleepy day. After this, I'll be running some errands and stuff like that and then going by nice. the FIA Expo uh, downtown because it's going to be a dead day. Now, does that pick up, you think, after the Fed announcement or? I'm sorry, yeah. what did you say? Yes, yeah, absolutely. Nice. I think we're just I think we're just waiting on 115. And then after this afternoon, once the evening markets open up again, uh, that <clears throat> we're going to have the currencies free flowing again. We're going sideways right now. I mean, you got the U.S. dollar yen is looking to still break out to uh, challenge resistance. But it's kind of just sleepy, creepy right now because of the Fed day. Um, I think with oil pulling back slightly a little bit today and bonds being kind of mixed, it's, it's a Fed day. It's going to be a choppy sideways day. I'll be used a lot of caution. But Overall, I'm still bullish the U.S. dollar yen. I'm looking for a breakout to the upside now. And uh, again, I think 116 is really, really viable by the end of the month. Uh, and 122, I think, is on the table still for the U.S. dollar yen um, by the end of uh, December, um, end of January. You know, but right now today, it's a sleepy Fed day. You know, I mean, I, I would watch the oil numbers. I think that the pullback right now is just a short term little little profit taking move. I think that you got the oil numbers today and after that. Within the next couple of days, we'll see oil probably bucking up against resistance again. And that's the thing that's going to help drive, like, I think the U.S. dollar yen trade and stuff. But as, as, as a whole, the currencies, if you're trading the Forex markets today, it's a sloppy trade. I mean, everything is kind of like, I mean, the dollar index, is, is if you're using that as a gauge, is not a good gauge because that's showing dollar strength. But it's really mixed across the board. You know, you have a weaker euro US dollar right now you have a little bit of strength in the pound US dollar you have a little bit of indecision in the US dollar Swiss you know so unless you're working a position already I would say wait for a signal in most of these markets until we get the Fed Fed day is over actually that's what we need to do and let's just assume that Chairman Powell comes out and, and basically says what's expected, and I'm sure he's going to have some words in terms of how he's balancing the tapering versus no rate rises anytime in the future. Those are all the expectations. Um, are there any markets that you see potentially getting the most volatility out of Chairman's uh, press conference this afternoon, or how does that usually play out in the Forex markets of what will be hit the most? I know the dollar, of course, uh, but versus the other cross rates in that market. Okay. Well, what, the way I see it is, I agree with what you just said. I think that there's going to be nothing new as far as what the Fed is going to do today, as, as far as what they're going to say. <clears throat> Obviously, the tapering and what have you is on the table. So after today, though, I think that the market's not going to like what the Fed is doing, you know, So, because it's more of the same. The fact that we can guess pretty much what the Fed is doing every meeting it doesn't say a lot for as, as the Fed's influence on the markets. And I think what you're going to see after today is like right now you see a little bit of a pullback in the in the 30 year and the 10 year, a little bit of strength, but it's really indecision. And I think you're setting yourself up for a head fake, especially as we come into uh, the oil numbers, the unemployment numbers uh, claims tomorrow after the uh, <clears throat> and also unemployment on Friday. So I think between this afternoon and Friday morning, you're going to see a head fake in the bonds in the 10 year and start to see them slam lows again and start trending lower. That I think will give a lift to the dollar, which will help with the US dollar yen trade, reinforce that as well as if oil, unless there's a big sell off in oil, you know, but I'm looking for a break in the interest rate market after this, meaning higher rates and giving a lift to the dollar versus a lot of the currencies. So especially versus the euro right now, it's just it's really struggling right now. I don't see very much any chance of seeing any real strength right now. I mean, short term, we got a sell signal on the hourly basis. But even on the daily basis, the trend is kind of your friend. 
I would so. use cautious with the pound, the pound U.S. dollar, even though it's hitting these lows, it, it could bounce back like a balloon underwater, <clears throat> you know. So, but yeah, I think really what we're going to see right now is that after today, we'll see how the oil numbers and based in mostly unemployment, how that impacts things. And if the bonds don't like that and that really sells off, I think it's going to be hard to beat the dollar bulls, you know. So, I, but I would be, use caution watching the dollar index for any <clears throat> currency cross as far as dollar strength. Look at the interest rate markets and the oil markets for clarity. I like that wrap up, man. I agree with a lot of it. I do. Uh, crude oil. So just jump into it. And I referenced it briefly before talking to you, man. Um, and the, t the the pullback today does look substantial. You're down 2.6% right now. I got light sweet crude at 81.72. Uh, but just for some context, I have a chart up here, Teddy, on a daily basis, just going back to August. And it's mm -hmm. basically no pullback. You know, from $62 up to 85 even if you're dealing with a 382 retracement, it'd be 76 bucks. Mm -hmm. A 50% would be 73 um, A lot of strength in that market. But of course, you're going to get some negative days in there. And really, that seems to be based off just a little bit of risk variables in there in terms of maybe something comes out. I was reading one thing this morning. Maybe the U.S. taps their reserves or something like that. But as we all know, um, the market forces in that crude market, man, are much bigger than uh, the U.S. tapping their reserves to kind of quell what's going on across the board. It seems like, Teddy, you know, I run into, I was in Publix the other day, right? They didn't have one thing I liked. Everybody, whether it's the, the butcher in Publix, right, to the cashier, is talking about supply shortages, man, which is pretty remarkable in terms of just what's going on in the economy and that we just can't keep up right now, it seems like. Is that, how are you feeling out just in your no, oh. normal day life in Chicago? Absolutely. What you said right there, you know, I've been watching it. I'm a Costco customer, okay? Nice. And over the past year, I've noticed how, you know, they used to have a lot of everything. Now they have a lot of staples, you know, consumer staples, like everything from toothpaste to things like that. But when you start looking at the food, actually, there's a lot of things that they don't carry anymore that they used to, or they're really starting to cut back on supply. Like I remember, like, for instance, the salmon, the little cut little squares and these little packets that they sell at every Costco, okay, in that little one freezer thing, it would be a huge end cap, right? Now you yes. have two little boxes if you're lucky, and you're lucky if you can get those. And this is at multiple Costco stores because I, depending sure. on when I'm traveling in Chicagoland, I'll stop at one on the way home or whatever, you know. And this is not just reflective of one; this is multiple ones. So if that's any indication of what Costco is doing, and they're a big buyer, you know, and I think that this is really starting to. And no one can deny that there's shortages out there; that things are disappearing. And I think that besides the fact that the cost of things is going up. People are starting to wonder, like, am I going to be able to still buy this product that I like six months from now, let alone three months from I now? Agree, you know? and those I agree, man. I agree. And that, that contributes to everything in Costco, man. Quite a charge for Costco, man. They just they can't time, sell enough right now. Know? Talk about just making 502. Remarkable. Well, Teddy, we appreciate the conversation. As always, right man, we look forward to having you on next week. And uh, you have a great week, man. We'll talk to you next Wednesday. Oh, he's cutting out a little okay. bit. Thanks, Folks, man. check out Teddy's website. Thanks, Teddy, man. Take care. I appreciate it. Take care.